Welcome, today's video comes all the way from Michigan and tells the story of Mark Latunsky, the kilt-wearing all-round crazy feller, I hope you like it. Mark David Latunsky was born the 28th of March 1969 in Michigan. He graduated from Central Michigan University in 1991 with a bachelor's degree in chemistry and from Iowa State University in 1995 with a master's degree in physical organic chemistry. He went on to work with the Flint Group from 1995 to 2007 as a research chemist and then as a lab manager with American Chemical Technologies from 2007 to February 2019, where he earned in excess of $100,000 per year. It was while working at the Flint Group that he met Emily, they soon became romantically involved and married in 2001 and went on to have four kids. They moved to Tyrell Road, which became the marital home. According to property records, Latunsky, purchased the home for $80,000 in May 2001 and applied for a permit to build an 8-foot by 20-foot living space in the basement later that same year. That would come in very handy for him later. Latunsky had a history of mental illness, he once tried to sue the city of Ames because he thought the monthly charge of $1 per month for storm sewers was unconstitutional. He lost the case. Latunsky was diagnosed in 2010 and 2012 with recurrent and chronic major depression with psychotic features, adjustment disorder with depression, and anxiety with paranoid schizophrenia and borderline personality traits. That's me every Monday morning. His mental illness could be treated with medication, but according to his wife, he had a history of just not taking it. Latunsky's behavior became more erratic, he stopped washing and shaving and began staying out overnight, giving his wife no explanation to where he had been. He then began talking to himself and at one point he thought that he wasn't the biological father to their children. He would often threaten to get rid of the family pets if they didn't do as they were told. He thought his wife, Emily, and her brother were trying to murder him by putting poison in his well. Mark and Emily would eventually split up in 2013, with Emily gaining full custody of the children. Later that year, Latunsky was arrested on two counts of parental kidnapping related to him keeping two of his children from their mother. Latunsky took the kids to a hotel and had refused to return them to Emily. Latunsky was found incompetent to stand trial in the court case in February 2014 and underwent an eight-month program of outpatient treatment. He was eventually found fit to stand trial in January 2015, however, the charges were dropped a few weeks later, at the request of his ex-wife, Emily. On the 22nd of August that year, a motion by Emily Latunsky asked that the court suspend her ex-husband's visitation with their children because of his mental health state. It wasn't long after this that Latunsky met Jamie Arnold, his soon-to-be second marriage, the pair met on Grinder before moving in together at Tyrell Road and got married in November 2015. They were married for three years until Arnold said he could not keep Latunsky on his medication and could no longer tolerate Latunsky's habit of bringing strangers home for sex. He stated he was in a dangerous situation and he had to get out of there. Time I came home and there's somebody there and uh, he tried to get me involved and it was like, you know what, I'm gonna make me dinner, I'm gonna go to bed. I, <sighs> that's why I had to get out. So I had to get, I couldn't take that lifestyle anymore. Arnold moved out of Latunsky's property in October 2018. Latunsky was then, in 2019, fired from his job for refusing to take his medication, although he would say he was fired for refusing to put harmful chemicals in products. After that, things would turn a bit crazy. 
On October the 10th, 2019, police received a frantic 911 call from a New York man who was in Michigan on business. He describes meeting a man at the bus station when he arrived into Michigan and they agreed to go for a drink together. As you do. The man explained to the dispatch handler that after having a drink with the man, the next thing he remembers is waking up, chained to a bed in the basement of the man's home. The man said he used a knife that he had to cut the leather strap on his ankle, which was connected to a metal chain and chained to the bed. He said he then fled the house and called 911. Hello, I see 911. Where is your emergency? Um, this is going to sound insane. Um, I'm here in Detroit. I'm from New York. And I met this guy at the bus station who offered me a ride. And I'm not even sure where I am. But I broke out of this fucking basement and I need a ride. Okay. I'm, in trouble. I'm in trouble. I can't find my way back to his place if I wanted to. Um, I don't know if you can take me a signal. I'm from New York. I'm walking down the street with a picture of my sweetheart. I need help. Okay, I'm going to get you help. Are you walking down the street right now? Yes, I am. I'm passing a bar, and it's all beautiful here. I can't believe her. I don't know where I am. I don't, I don't know. Like, I've never ever had anything like this happen. I don't know whether he drugged me. I don't know. I woke up in a fucking basement, okay? Chained in a basement with a leather thing around my ankle, and I cut it with the butcher knife that I have in my freaking hand. Excuse my French. Okay. Do you have anything on you right now? Um, I have my phone. I'm sorry, what? Are you carrying anything? Uh, A butcher knife. Until I see a police officer, when I see a police officer, I will throw it. Until then, I don't trust that he's not walking up because I got lost, and I don't even know if I'm headed towards his house or not. That's why I'm dialing 911. But I'm lost. So I don't even know if I'm headed back towards his house. He just woke up in a basement. He was chained to something, so he cut the chain off. He's I cut the leather strap that had the chain. He's not sure where he's at. I, I just want to get out of here, and I want to go home. I don't even care about the legal case I was here for. I'm sorry I can't help them. I want to go home. Okay. All right. Listen, I've got help on the way. What were you here for? Uh, I'm, I'm a volunteer court advocate. I came here to help on the CSC meeting. And I was supposed to be meeting them at the bus station. I met this guy. I'm by. He was cute. He hit on me. I know. We went out to the car. We dropped. Uh, we went to the store. I had a soda. I woke up in the basement. Okay. He obviously drugged me. The man stated that he was just lost and did not want to press any charges. He just wanted a ride to safety. Police officers arrived at where the man was hiding and gave him a ride to a local gas station. Bizarrely, the man then telephoned Latunsky when he got to the gas station. What's even more bizarre is that the man actually went back to Latunsky's house and spent a few more days there. So you wake up after being drugged, chained to a bed and you go back for a bit more, my good God. Around a month later, on the 25th November, police got a call from another terrified man. He told the dispatcher that he'd escaped from a house where he was chained up in the basement. He escaped the house and ran down the street wearing nothing but a leather kilt. Sherwatts County 911. I get away from the same creepy guy. He hadn't tied in the basement. I'm sorry, what's that? I'm trying to escape from some guy who had me chained up in his basement. You had you chained in his basement? Where are you calling from? I don't know. I am heading to this road. Are you on? From here. Okay, hold on one second. Looks like you're on Tyrell Road. I could be. Are you walking? Yeah. Hold on one second. I don't even have shoes on. 3562. I don't know if I to go someone's house. I don't know where I'm at. I'm trying to put out a call. 62, okay. you can start off for Tyrell, just east of Morris Road, had a subject that was cleaned up in someone's basement, just fled the residence. He got on foot. Is he after me? Okay, is he? I need you to go to somewhere safe. If you can run up to somebody's house. Where are you at right now? Are you getting able to get away? Help me. Help me. Six 
too. He's running towards the house. The guy's trying to come after him. I'm trying to get further. Okay, I need an address where you're at. I'm trying to get it. What's your address? I'm on the phone with the cops right now. 431. What's their address? I need their address. He won't give me the address. Are you outside or inside somebody's house? I'm trying to find someone to help me. Are you in the road? I have some state troopers that aren't very far away. I don't know where. Are you in? The he managed to run to a neighbor's house, who informed police to where they were located. Before the police got there, Latunsky arrived at the scene, also wearing nothing but a kilt. I bet it was like a scene from Braveheart. Latunsky explained to them he was only chasing him because he ran away wearing his expensive $300 kilt. Latunsky told the neighbor it was all a big misunderstanding and left before police arrived. I hear a pounding at my door at four in the afternoon and I jump up, my dogs are barking like you probably hear and this kid has his, his face covered with a rag and a phone to his ear and he's like, help me, help me, he's after me, he's after me, just scared to death out of his mind. A gentleman pulls up in my driveway in a silver SUV and he gets out and he's wearing the same getup this guy's wearing, which is a leather skirt and a couple of belts crossing her body, no shoes on, no shirt on, it's 40 degrees out. This kid grabs my arm and clutches behind me, keep him away from me, keep him away from me, just scared out of his mind. No charges were filed by either man for whatever reason. David Kaiser, with the Michigan State Police, pointed out that bondage during sex is not illegal. Sometimes, people in these relationships are embarrassed, or maybe they have a professional career, and don't want their private life interfering with their professional career, so they are very reluctant to share anything with law enforcement, he added. What he's trying to say is, it might hurt, but it's definitely not illegal. Kevin Bacon, not him, was a 25-year-old hairdresser from Michigan. Kevin was last seen around 5.30 p.m. on Christmas Eve when he told his roommate he was leaving to meet a man he'd been chatting with on Grindr, the dating app. His roommate received a message from Kevin later that day saying he was having fun and might not make it home that night. But when Kevin failed to show up at his parents' house on Christmas Day, as he did every year, they began to grow worried and reported him missing to the police. The days following his disappearance, his friends and family organized search parties for Kevin, and his car was later found by his parents, abandoned at a family dollar, his phone, identification, wallet and cash were inside the car. The clothes he had been wearing when he left his apartment were also found in the car. His friend, Michelle Myers said, he did not bring a change of clothes when he left, so right now, he is either unclothed, or in clothing they put him in. When he goes out, it's never for more than a few hours, and if he stays the night somewhere, he tells someone, she also said. After checking Kevin's phone, that was left in his car, his grinder messages would lead police to Mark Latunsky. On the 28th of December, several days after his disappearance, police officers arrived at Latunsky's home with the purpose of conducting a welfare check on Kevin Bacon. Latunsky gave the police permission to search his property. After the initial search, there was no sign of Kevin anywhere in the house, but upon closer inspection, police were able to uncover a secret door hidden by a false wall. The door led to his basement, where they found Kevin hanging upside down by his ankles from the ceiling. Latunsky was arrested and taken into custody. When he was interviewed, Latunsky admitted that he stabbed Kevin once in the back, then he slit his throat. He then wrapped rope round his ankles and hung him from the rafters in the basement. Once he had Kevin hung up in the basement, he cut off his testicles, went up to the kitchen, then he fried them up and ate them. Each to their own, I myself, think they'd be all gristle.
Latunsky told detectives they started chatting on Grinder and made an agreement to meet to engage in sexual activity. He picked up Kevin from a local dollar store car park and made him leave all his clothes and personal belongings in the car. Then he asked Kevin to pick out an outfit to wear, I'm betting it was a kilt. He was blindfolded, had earmuffs and restraints put on, then was driven the 30 minutes to Latunsky's home. He then said that Kevin, who he said had had suicidal thoughts in the past, had asked him to assist in his suicide. Latunsky claims he agreed and decided to use a knife, as it would be the least painful, and then hung the body up to drain all of the blood out of it. Latunsky even bought a dehydrator, as he was going to utilize parts of Bacon's body for different things. I wonder what he meant by that. Oh yes, that foot would make a lovely paperweight, and I could also use the other one as a doorstop. Crazy. Then said he only ate his testicles, as it was a new moon, or that explains it then. Latunsky's defense would try to say he was insane, how he thought he was Welsh royalty, a man named Edgar Thomas Hill from the Thomas clan, probably why he likes the kilts. Suspected killer Mark Latunsky has officially entered an insanity plea, meaning it could be months before he's back in court. Latunsky is accused of killing Kevin Bacon on Christmas Eve. Fox 47's Kylie Khan has the latest on that investigation. Latunsky appeared very briefly through video conference from the Shiawassee County Jail. The hearing itself only lasted about two minutes. He believes he's named someone else. He believes he is from a royal family, family out of Wales, the Thomas clan. Um, and just the nature of the crime itself, uh, you've got to send him for this evaluation. We would have to find him not to be a danger to release. He is denying that he committed the crime? Um, I can't answer that. It's, it's, at this point, we're not whether he's denying it or admitting it. It's a point of checking his mental health. The public defender says his office is doing their own investigation. They're still waiting to receive some documents from the prosecuting attorney, and they're hoping to have those by today. Latunsky's defense also asked for a charge of assisted suicide, but prosecutors were having none of that. In January 2020, Latunsky was deemed unfit to stand trial due to his mental state and was sent to receive treatment in a Michigan psychiatric hospital. Then, in October 2020, after nearly 10 months of treatment, Judge Ward Clarkson declared that he was deemed mentally fit to stand trial. The case is ongoing, and Latunsky has pleaded not guilty on grounds of insanity. No trial date has been set yet, but I will do an update of this story when it happens. But I know what Latunsky won't be seeing for a long time. Freedom! Thanks for watching, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think Latunsky is two sandwiches short of a picnic? And please give me the thumbs up and subscribe if you think I'm worthy enough, see you in the next video.